Good morning, everyone. Welcome to celebration this morning. Let's stand and worship this morning. Come on. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? Of way. It was my tomb. Come on. Till I met you. Woo. I was breathing, but not alive. Yes. All my failures I tried to hide. Hey. It was my tomb till I met you. Woo! You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious grave. Yeah. You called my name. Your mercy has saved my soul. Come on. Now your freedom is all that I know. Come on. Hey. The old man knew. Hey. Jesus, when I met you, hey. you called my name. Lift up the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our God who reigns upon the throne, our God who is mighty, who is awesome, who is magnificent, our God who is amazing and magnificent. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, till you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is me and that I breathe and I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name.
to your next door neighbor, give them a high five, knuckle punt. Welcome each other. Can't 
thank you, God. God, come have your way in this place. Let your presence come in here. Overflow this place, God.
deserves all the glory and all the honor today. No wonder. No wonder we Come on. call you Savior. Come on, Jesus, receive all the honor and praise today. No wonder receive all the glory. opportunity today to enter into what we would call the holies of holies of worship because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on the cross. Amen. It's nothing that we could ever do to earn it. There's no amount of righteousness that we could ever muster up. But because of what Jesus has done, we can declare that no wonder they call you Savior. Amen. And no matter how dark your life may seem today, here's what I declare over you today that his light, who is the light, will pierce through the deepest darkness. Amen. Amen. Let's pray real quickly. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that we get another opportunity to lift his praises up today, God. Holy Spirit, you are already here and you are welcome here to illuminate Jesus in every heart that is sitting here today or standing here today. We love you and we thank you. We pray for every church in this region. God, that your, our love would be loud for Jesus today. God, we pray for every pastor that the good news would go forth with boldness and clarity today, God. We pray for every worship team and all those that are serving. We pray that you would put fresh wind in their sails, God, and that they would serve unto you today. And Father, we pray once again that your Holy Spirit would invade Tupelo. That every ounce of Tupelo, God, every ounce of space, every area, God, that you would permeate this whole city, God, and that hearts would turn back to you. Would you raise up a church that wants to be the church, God, and not just do church, God? May we be the church, and we do it for your glory. Will you say amen with me today? Amen, amen. Please be seated. Thank you for being here. My name is Rob. I'm the lead pastor here. And on behalf of my wife and the rest of our faith family, thank you for being with us today in worship. We're so glad that you're with us today. Let me just make a, uh, just a few things here, a little announcements and a little housekeeping for you. Uh, as some of you already know this, we are in a brand new location and God opened up this location for us several months ago. So you see a lot of part in our progress signs and things like that. And that's just because we're not done with all the projects yet. We got some construction, some painting, some flooring and all those things. So we're going to ask that you don't go into those rooms. And if you need anything, we don't have all of our signage up. Look for the people that have these blue lanyards on that say, how can I help you or may we help you? And they would be more than happy to direct you to wherever you need to go. But real quickly, if everybody will come in close on this one. Just real quickly so you'll know, point of reference, the bathrooms are this way to my right, to your left. There's a sign over there, but it's kind of hard to see. And that's where our kids' ministries are as well. And speaking of the kids' ministries, our uh, Kids Celebrate director, Hope Wingo, she's right back here at the back wall. If you would love your kid to got, or child to go to Kids Celebrate, she would be more than happy to take them back there with her. Uh, I will ask that if you are a guest today and you have not checked them in electronically, please do so because we take your child's safety and security very seriously and they're going to continue to learn about Jesus back there in what we would call a clean and safe environment. How many people like clean and safe environments, right? All the moms said, hey, amen, can I get a witness? Revival's a break, break, break out in clean and safe environments, amen? So you're more than welcome to do that. And parents, if this is your first time here and you say, hey, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are a bunch of cray-cray folks back there, you're more than welcome to go back there and check them out. I promise they're going to love it and have a good time for the glory of God. Uh, real quickly, let me bring up the worship guide for you today. You should have received one of these when you came in today, the worship guide. And the worship guide just has several things that we want to make you aware of. So if you'll open yours up if you got one today. And if you didn't, one of our dream team leaders, if you just kind of do your finger like this, they'd be more than happy to bring you one. But in the worship guide, it does talk about the, the kids celebrate. The next thing I want to make a mention is a connect card just like this right here. It's in the back of every seat. Uh, we love to know when we have guests. So if you would fill that out sometime between now and the end of service, we would love for you to do that. Uh, we have what we call a hassle-free guarantee. We're not going to bother you or telemarket you or anything like that. But we will send you a text message saying thank you for being in worship with us and how you can learn more about our heart and our vision. Uh, the third thing is next steps, right? We're really big on helping people live on purpose and live out their mission for God. Some churches call it find your fit. 
Do you know that the majority of our lack of dissatisfaction with this life and the lack of joy and the lack of other things that we sense, I believe, really goes back to this, to the lack of purpose, to not serving on purpose for the glory of God. And so we do a four-week journey with folks, and we love to do that to help you find your fit in the body of Christ. That is every Wednesday night here on campus from 6.30, 7.30. It tells you how to do that. Uh, Real quickly, on the last thing on the left-hand side of the worship guide is our invite card. We're really big about inviting people here, okay? We're really, really big about inviting people here because we believe that a simple invitation, it should have been in your worship guide, right? The invitation can lead to someone's supernatural transformation. If you look there in your worship guide real quickly, it says, did you know that 83% of our unchurched friends would come to church with us at least one time if we took the time to invite them? But here's the alarming statistic. The alarming statistic is that only 2% of Christians ever invite their friends to go worship with them. Here's the thing. I don't want to be the statistical church, right? It's not enough in this culture just to do church anymore. We have to be the church, okay? And we have the best news that anyone could share, and that is the good news of Christ. Two more things I'll make you aware of is we do have baptism over here. Um, To my left, we got the baptism tank out. I will give you a forewarning this morning. Our heater pump broke, but we call it suffering for the glory of God. So, hey, you know. If you, if you want to be baptized this morning, we were scheduling this Sunday for baptism. We know we had several people surrender to Christ this past month. No pressure to do so, but we believe that baptism is important. Why? Because it was important to Jesus. Amen? And so if you want to be baptized and you say, well, I didn't bring my clothes, I got you covered. Right? I have everything. Listen, I even have clean underwear for you. Praise God for clean underwear, not used ones. Amen? We don't recycle around here. Isn't that for the glory of God? Can I get an amen? Come on, get, get, a, game and get a witness, right? Yeah, and you can even keep them if you want to, right? Because we definitely don't want them back. Anyhow, let's move on. But we do have baptism for you immediately after service. We have towels. We have shirts. We have shorts. Everything you need, right? And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If that is you today, our associate pastor is right here on the front row. Will you raise your hand? This is Matt Mackey, our associate pastor. He can lead you to where the towels and everything is at, okay? And we would love for you to follow in that today, especially if you have surrendered to Christ and you said, hey, I'm tired of, I'm tired of being my own sovereign and my own king, right? Here's the good news. God will save you right now. Isn't that cool that God doesn't wait to the end of service to save people? If that's you right now, I'm just going to pray that over you, okay? I know we're breaking the order of service, but we don't really care about stuff like that around here too much, okay? But I want to pray right now for salvation for someone. I don't know. The Lord is leading me really heavy. I feel his spirit impressing upon me on that right now, that maybe you've wrestled. Maybe he's been knocking. Maybe he's been pursuing you and just so many other things that got in the way. I just feel to pray for that right now. And here's the cool thing. There's nowhere in the Bible that says you got to be saved 10 years before you're baptized. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? All right, two people thought it was great. Okay, it's good. All right. Anyhow, I think it's awesome, right, that he wants to save you right now. Amen. Let me pray for that. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, would you convict every heart? Come on, God, move the idols out of the way. Move the false gods and the little gods out of the way, Father. Smash any of our agendas, God, anything that would try to stand in the way from fully surrendering these keys to this kingdom, God. Remind us today that we make a really horrible God. So for that someone today in this audience, if that is you right now in your seat, I can't give you the words to say, but here's what I would start. That God, forgive me, I am so sorry for trying to do things my own way i need you god i'm desperate for you father forgive me i confess today to you listen i'm not asking you to accept him today because his gospel demands complete surrender he's asking for the white flag of surrender today that i surrender everything i surrender everything to you. Come on, if that's you right now in your seat, you cry out to him in your own words that you need him. All of heaven, the Bible says that when one sinner repents, there's a party going on in heaven. That's one of the reasons we wanted to call this celebration church because we wanted to celebrate what Jesus is doing. 
and what he's done and what he's going to do. And the Bible says that when one sinner repents, that all of heaven rejoices because they were once lost, but now they're found. They were once blind, but now they see. Come on, just a moment here. I know we got our worship pastor coming up to share today, but just a moment. The Holy Spirit won't release me from this moment. Come on. Maybe you're a prodigal. Maybe you've been far away from God. Come on, that's somebody in this room. You've been far away from God, and you've tried to do things your own way, and you've said, you know what? I can do this without God. And the Father is reminding you today that he is the one that has never went anywhere, that he was pursuing you this whole time. And that he has a plan and a purpose. And just like the story of the prodigal son in our New Testament, it says there was a party thrown. So if that's you and you've been far away from God today, come on. If that's you, come on. The Father's looking for you. He's saying, come on home. Come on home. Well, Rob, you don't know what I've done. It's none of my business what you've done, but he already knows, and he's still saying, come on home. I feel like I'm too far away, God. You're never, ever, ever. One of my favorite quotes by one of my favorite pastors today, by a guy named Matt Chandler, he says this, that you will never out the cross of Christ. Come on, if that's you today, come on home. We're just going to camp here for a minute. If you're a guest with us today, we welcome you and we thank you. Don't be alarmed. Right? We just want to take a moment. Come on, we don't want to rush the presence of God. Come on, God. Holy Spirit, move. Come on. The fresh winds of his love in this place this morning. A tidal wave of his mercy this morning. Come on, some of you have been desensitized to his presence for far too long, and he's reminding you to taste afresh again of his goodness. Come on, breathe in grace today. Breathe in grace. Breathe out grace today. Come on, some of you have been operating from that dry place, and he's refreshing you right now. Father, we pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning, God. That you would submerge us in your presence, in your goodness. I need you, God. Come on, would you tell him you need him right there where you're at? I need you, Jesus. Some of you think that he's forgotten you this morning, and he's reminding you that he has not forgotten you, that he's for you, that he's with you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen and amen. Amen. Isn't he good to remind us of that? Listen, if you're a guest with us today, we, we love guests. We don't try to freak guests out, but man, there's one thing that we're always going to do. We're always going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Listen to me this morning. I, I want everybody to come in close and look up here. We can do nothing apart from the Holy Spirit of God. We can't save anybody. We can't change anybody. We can't fix anybody. We can't lead anybody to anything apart from the Holy Spirit working in this place. Amen? And don't you want his presence to saturate every every ounce of space or every area of space in this building this morning all right so baptism as i was saying here after service please don't let anything stop you not even the cold we'll buy you some hot chocolate or hot coffee or something afterwards about 20 of us will come and give you a big hug and kind of do that body heat thing or whatever we got to do to keep you warm so you won't go into hypothermia right it's it, i'm serious it's not that bad but it is cold okay Last thing I'll mention to you today real quickly, and then I'm going to turn it over to our worship pastor, is this, that we have a Super Bowl party here tonight at 530. We do this every year, and uh, many of you don't hate football. I get that. But listen, come for the fellowship. Come for the community. Just come and hang out and do life with us. A lot of times you'll get to meet people behind the scenes this way. And all that we ask that you do is just bring a finger food, a snack, something, maybe your favorite salsa, your dip. Whatever you do on Super Bowl Sunday, we would love for you to be here. We're going to have it here on campus. It'll be at 5.30, okay? So I'm going to pray for us again real quickly. And then I'm going to turn it over to our worship pastor. He's going to talk about baptism today. And then hopefully we'll, we'll be having some people that will get baptized today. So let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're so good to us. 
I thank you, God, that you have, you have, you never run out of mercy and grace, and that is mind blowing to me. So, Father, as the words of life are being presented today, would you illuminate Jesus to every heart in this place? God, there's some people here today that need to just fall in love with you all over again. Would you capture our gaze? Would you let us stand in awe of the Lamb of God? You have all of our attention this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. All right, some of you are all right. Some of you are still kind of needing some coffee. Let's try this again. Good morning. Good. All right, I, I want to give a special recognition and thank you to Peyton and the worship team, and thank you, Rashad, for filling in on keys. Let's give them a, let's give them a hand clap of thanks for that. I do want to say real quick, too, um, keep our electric guitar prayer, player, James, in your prayers. He texted us a couple days ago, and he threw his back out. Um, so he is going to go to the doctor tomorrow. So we're just going to, we want to cover him in prayer. Actually, can we just go ahead and do that right now? Can we just stop right now and pray for him? Um, he may be watching online, and if he's not, we're still going to cover him in prayer anyway. So let's just pray real quick for James. God, we thank you and we plead your blood, Lord Jesus, over this time of prayer for James. We thank you for everything that he's done and what he means uh, not to us, not just as a guitar player, but God, as, as a brother in Christ. And we ask, God, that right now you would reach out with your healing hand and you would begin to put his back into uh, back into place and that you would bring healing and comfort through this pain and just remove it in Jesus' name. We just love you and we praise you and we thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. Like I said, well, like Rob said, I'm the worship pastor. I'm, my name's BJ, and I'm going to leave it at that because most people get mad at me for my rest of my joke with that, so I'm going to leave it alone. Now you're wondering, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Sorry, Matt, it's beef jerky. No, it's not. Uh, we, we again, we thank you for being here. And again, praise team, thank you so much. You did, you guys, man, I just love the spirit of, man, I just love your spirit of worship and service, guys. You did an amazing job. Um, as Rob mentioned, today is Super Bowl Sunday. Does anybody know, can anybody tell me what teams are playing tonight? That means nobody knows or nobody really cares. The Rams. <laughs> Somebody's a little bitter about the Saints not being in there. So it should be the, uh, if I, I didn't know, I had to look it up. I believe it's the Rams and the Patriots. Um, and it's okay. I'm not watching it for the game. I'm watching it for the commercials. That's all I care about. I want to see if they have any better Dorito commercials this year because those have been, the last few years, those have been on point. I'm just saying, those have been awesome. Um, so despite whether or not you care about the teams playing, like Rob said, we invite you to come join us tonight for the fellowship. We're going to have we're gonna have some food here, I think, people are bringing some things i hope so because i am and i don't know if i have enough to feed this entire church family but if so we'll just pray over it like jesus and we'll pray he multiplies it like the fish and the bread but we're going to do that tonight come join us uh speaking of which we have two teams that are playing if anybody knows thing about sports and i hate to say this to some people it's going to hurt your feelings only one team can win there is no participation trophy in this competition so only one team is going to win. Only one team is going to walk home with rings on their fingers. Um, with that in mind, does anybody know what usually happens to the winning coach towards the end of the game? What? He gets some. He said he gets a drink poured on him. That's right. He gets dumped with a cooler of either Gatorade or water, and it's usually ice cold. So that being said, if they're going to get dumped for winning a game, you can get dunked today for being on the winning team with Jesus. That's my start on that. That was kind of impromptu, but that's what it is. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about baptism. And we're going to look a little bit about what baptism is. And by the way, I say this every time because I get going, and I, it's like a, just like a boulder going down a hill. It picks up speed and traction. So if I get going too fast, just raise your hand and let, wave at me, let me know. And if I don't notice it right away, keep doing it because one or two things, either I'll notice and I'll slow down or I'll just think you're praising the Lord with me and we'll just keep preaching harder. I don't know. But yeah, that's what I want to talk about today is baptism. So if you would, let's take your Bibles and let's open up to the book of Matthew. I don't want to, I don't want to assume that everyone in here knows a whole lot about the Bible. In fact, I would rather go on the side that people are not sure about it. So I want to kind of help you out. The book, Bible is actually a collection of 66 books. There are 39 in the Old Testament and 29, uh, sorry, 27 in the New Testament. 
Uh, and that's what they're broken down into in Old Testament and New Testament. Old is before Jesus came. New Testament deals with when Jesus showed up and everything afterwards. So um, Matthew is really easy to find. It's the very first book in the New Testament. And if you're still not sure how to find that, you are more than welcome to use your table of contents in the front, find that page number, uh, number and jump to it. There's nothing wrong with using the resources that have been given to you. So I just want to put that out there. I don't want to assume that everybody knows. I'd rather think that people don't know and just explain it to them. I am a teacher by trade, so if I get too much on the explanation, I apologize. I'll try to do some crazy stuff. Not really, but I'll just try to keep you engaged. We're going to be in chapter 28. This is easy to find too because it is the very last chapter of the very first book of the New Testament. And in fact, we're going to be on the last three verses of this chapter. So once again, this should be fairly easy and quick to find. What we're going to do today is look at some scripture and we're going to come back. This is going to be like our home scripture. We're going to start here we're going to hit some other scriptures, and then we're going to come back and land on this. But what we're going to do in this scripture is we're going to look at something that is of, really is of a deep importance and very important to anyone who calls himself a Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, this passage we're looking at is known as the Great Commission. And a commission is basically instructions or a command given to a person or a group of people. So Jesus gave it to his disciples. And so this task was given, and again, if we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ, uh, this applies to us. So hopefully by now you have found the scripture we're going to be at. And if you have not, it's going to be on the screen, so I invite you to read along with me as we read it together. So this is Matthew 28, uh, verse 18 through 20. I'm reading from the NASB. It's the New American Standard. So it may read a little different, but again, the scripture is also on the screen if you want to follow along. And it says, And Jesus came up, and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's pray one more time. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to enter into your presence openly and freely we thank you god for this opportunity to learn and study your word we're asking holy spirit that you would reveal jesus to us today in the scripture we're asking that you would speak to our hearts speak to our minds and that we will take this word and it will be applied and we will be a brand new creation in you i ask god that you would touch my lips that i would speak your word with love and with boldness and god i pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart god would be pleasing in your sight we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're looking at baptism. I want to look at three things about baptism. I want to look at the what, the who, and the why. So what is baptism? Who can be baptism, uh, bap, uh, baptized? Get a little tongue tied there. And why you should be baptized. So let's look first at the what. There are three what's we want to look at. We're going to look at what baptism is, what it signifies, and what it symbolizes. So let's look first at baptism. Again, this is going to be a little bit of uh, knowledge heavy here at the beginning, but hopefully some of you like it because I like background information. The word baptism or baptize is a transliteration of the Greek word baptizo. A transliteration, if you don't know what that is, is basically taking a word in the alphabet of one language and writing it into the alphabet of another language so that we know how it's pronounced. That's the difference between transliteration and translation. Translation says this is what the word means. Transliteration says this is what it sounds like in your language. Has everybody got with me on this so far? So what that means is every time in the Bible you read the word baptize or baptism, you're not really reading the definition. What you're reading is you're reading what it's supposed to sound like in the English. Okay, now there's a lot of discussion you can have about why this happened. That is not for today. I'm not diving into that. If you want to know, you can talk You can talk to Pastor Rob Sevilla. You can talk to Associate Pastor Matt Mackey. You can maybe talk to me a little bit about it, or you can talk to Daniel Monaghan, one of our Bible study teachers, over some cheese dip, your treat, because you want to know, and we will tell you. But what I want to look at is I really want to look at what the word means. 
so if it's not translated, then what does this word mean? What is the real definition? Well, it basically means to be immersed. It means to be dipped repeatedly and submerged. That's your first what? Baptism is immersion in water. That means you are going under. And hopefully you'll come up before the bubbles stop. And that depends on who's baptizing you. Uh, so with that in mind, with it be, meaning immersion in water, I want to look at a scripture, uh, story in Scripture that points to this and kind of explains it. So let's go to the book of Acts. We're going to have it up here, and it should be in your sermon notes. Uh, we're going to look at the book of Acts, chapter 8. And this is where we're going to kind of focus for a little bit. I'm going to look at verse 38 through 39. And it says, And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water. Philip as well as the eunuch and he baptized him when they came up out of the water the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and the eunuch no longer saw him but went on his way rejoicing we see here that they went down into the water and then they came up out of the water you can't go you can't come up out of the water unless you first go down into the water okay Mm, let me say that again you cannot come up out of the water until you go down into the water you can't come up out of something and come through something until you first go into it I think a lot of us spend a lot of our times praying God God please keep me from doing this keep me from this 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 horrible thing keep me from this part but God wants to bring you through it so he can use you to help other people through it so maybe the thing that we are praying God to keep us from God wants to bring us through so he can show us what we are really made of but more importantly so he can show us what he is made of you cannot experience what God can truly do until you first go through it I didn't want to go into all that but I just felt the spirit said to do it you can't come out of something until you first go through it so you can't come out of the water until you first go into it now that in mind this shows us that you have to be dipped but not all cases of being dipped, immersed, or submerged into water uh, count as baptism. I can go and somebody can hold me under in a pool. That does not mean I'm getting baptized. There is some more to it. For a follower or a believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ, being baptized in water has a deeper meaning than just being dumped. So what does it mean for a believer or follower of Jesus? Now, let me say, make sure we understand this. If you are a follower of Jesus, that means you are professing him as Lord and Savior. And we're going to hit a little bit more of that in our discussion about, uh, about the who of baptism. But if you have put your trust in Christ and you are saying he is Lord of your life, you are a follower and a disciple of Jesus. You are following his teachings. So I want to make sure we know what I mean when I say a disciple and a follower. Again, I don't want to assume that everybody knows. I would rather go on the side that we don't know and just because Paul does that a lot if you read Paul Paul says I don't want you to be ignorant of it and he, he'll say the same thing over and over in several different letters just so that we can understand it because I'm a teacher and I've seen students I have told them till I am purple in the face and almost passing out the same thing and they still look at me huh I don't know what you're talking about and I have to have the Lord help me with my patience so I don't throw something and I'm just going to leave it at that so, what does baptism signify? That's what we're looking at first. Well, number two, here's your answer. Baptism signifies that a change has occurred. It signifies that a change has occurred. It basically means a decision has been made. So let's look again. We're still in chapter 8 of Acts. And we're going to go back a couple of verses earlier. We're going to be in 836. I'm going to encourage you. I know I gave you these scriptures. But go home and read them yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you. We, we say it here, don't drink the Kool-Aid, don't take our word for it. Go dig in yourself. That's the only way you're really going to grow. It says, as they went along the road, they came to some water. So there's the water again. And the eunuch said, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized them. So let me give you a little bit more background story. You can go read this, but I'm going to kind of give you a little cliff note version of it. If 
you go back around verse 26 in the Bible and check this out, you'll see that this eunuch was from Ethiopia. Okay? Since he was ver referred to as, as Ethiopian, that means he probably was not Jewish. And since he was reading the prophet Isaiah, and the Bible even says he was going to Jerusalem to worship, I, I think it's a safe bet to, to believe and go with this idea that he probably converted to Judaism, which was the religion of the Jewish people. So he converted to it. Now, some of you may not know what a eunuch is, and if you don't, you could always use Google, but you may not want to see the images. You may be scarred for life. Needless to say, since he was a eunuch and he served under a queen, the king did not have to worry about who the baby daddy was. Three, two, yes, I said it. So around 27, we see that this man is on his way to Jerusalem to worship. I'm just going to tell you, I was saying that, and I looked down here at, at Daniel Monaghan. He's just covered his He's like, oh, no, don't do it. Um, that's my sense of humor. Some, that's why they don't let me speak much because my humor is bad. But I deal with kids. I deal with kids going through puberty all the time. So anyways, but again, he, he's reading the prophet Isaiah. He's going to Jerusalem to visit, I'm uh, sorry, to worship. So he is probably a convert. Now, Philip, led by the Holy Spirit, starts with this passage that he's reading in Isaiah, and he begins to preach Jesus to him. And it's during this time that something happens, something that's not visible. The Ethiopian unit makes a private decision to follow Jesus. You see, and then seeing some water and desiring to be baptized, he made it public. Baptism is really just a public declaration of a private decision. The eunuch had decided in his heart to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And then he took the next step and he made it public. So baptism signifies this change. Baptism wasn't a new idea either. If you, are, if you go read the Bible in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you, it talks about John the Baptist. John the Baptist had a baptism of repentance. He would dip people in the water and cleanse. And a lot of scholars believe that baptism has its origin in the Jewish cleansing ritual, okay, which basically they would cleanse themselves for purity and all this stuff like that. And then at some point, the priest decided, um, we're going to use this for any non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, who wanted to become a part of the Jewish faith in Judaism, they were going to use this as a way to symbolize and signify that they are converting to Judaism. So the Ethiopian would have understood this if he, in fact, had already been a convert to Judaism. So when he made this decision to follow Jesus, he was baptized in this way, signifying that he had a desire now to identify not with Judaism, not with the law, but to identify with Jesus Christ. Baptism signifies this change. It's a change from a private decision to a public declaration. It's saying that my identity is now changed. Baptism declares that I now identify with Jesus Christ and His work and what He declares. So what does it look like? What does baptism, how does it show the change? What about baptism symbolizes our identity with Jesus. Well, before I give you the answer, we're going to look at some more scriptures. Let's look now at Romans 6, 3 through 5. We're going to see how, how this, we're just going to see the symbolism. Let's just look at it. I'm not even going to explain it. Let's let the word speak for itself. Romans 6, 3 through 5. Don't you know that all of you, sorry, that all of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is how baptism identifies us with Jesus Christ. It's saying that I have decided to die to myself. I have decided to die to my sinful, lustful, selfish desires, and I want to identify with the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ. That's what it means when we go under to the water. That means I have died to myself. I am being buried with Jesus. It's saying that when I go down into the water, the old me is dead and being buried. The old me is gone. 
The old you is gone. It signifies an end to the hold that sin has had over me. Will sin be present? Yes. We live in a sinful, fallen world. It will always be present. But if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and He is Lord and Savior and Master of your life, sin no longer has a hold on you. It is no longer your master. Jesus is now your Lord and Master. And it's saying that after I've gone down and when I come up, that a new me is born. It's saying that all filth from the past is washed away. That all the lies and the death that were spoken over me, either by the enemy, myself, or whoever's been in my life, it is no longer valid. We can sit here and we can sing the song we sang today. I am a child of God. It's because it's who you say I am. It is declaring that when I come out of the water, I am walking in what he says and declares about me. I am walking in who he says I am. And I'm going to walk in his declaration about me. You see, in Christ, anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, all things are made new. So if you are struggling today with the things from your past, but you have made that decision, you have been washed in the blood of Jesus, and you have repented and you've confessed your sins, and Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you are a brand new creation. The old no longer has a hold on you. The enemy wants to confuse you. The enemy, who is, who is Satan, that's our enemy, he wants to tell you lies to keep you from experiencing the true grace and life and joy that God wants to offer in this new life. We just got done talking about brand new, how Jesus makes us new. This is what baptism shows. It shows we are made new in Christ. But I love this part, that that is not the end. It is not the end just to be baptized and washed clean. It is saying that I now have a hope for a future. Just as Jesus rose from the dead, I now have that promise to one day rise with him. That is what baptism signifies. It signifies that I am now one with Jesus Christ. So I just want, I don't know about you, but I just want to praise. I'm going to tell you right now, you may not feel like it, but let's just go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise because we are brand new. I don't think some of you believe that. Let's give him praise because he's made me brand new. He has made you brand new. My dad's coming out of me. My dad's a preacher. He's a good old Pentecostal Church of God preacher. He's coming out of me. Man. God, we thank you. Thank you for making us new. Thank you for washing our sins away. God, we cannot do it ourselves, but you could. You paid a price that you did not owe because we couldn't pay it. We thank you, Father, that we get to identify with you. Now, I'm not saying that water baptism saves us. Let me, I want to put that in here. Because it could almost sound like that. No, water baptism does not save you. If you ever go, write this scripture down. Ephesians 2.8. Write it down in your notes. Ephesians 2.8. I'm going to tell you what it says, but I want you to go look it up so you can make sure I'm telling you right. Because if I'm telling you wrong, please come tell me so I can fix it. Ephesians 2.8 says that it is by grace through faith that saves us. It's not of our works that we can boast about it. It is the gift of God. So it is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That is how you are saved. Now some people would want to look at this next, this next verse that I'm going to show you and say, but this verse says water baptism saves us. No, let's look at it. I even highlighted a couple of things. So we're going to go to 1 Peter. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21, and it should be in your notes. It says, this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you. It doesn't say this water saves you. It doesn't say this baptism saves you. It says it symbolizes a baptism that saves you. It's not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, it's not the being immersed in water that saves you. It's not the washing away of dirt from your body in water that saves you. This is not what saves you. I want to make sure you understand this. You have to have your sins washed away. And no amount of water, bleach, disinfectant can do that. That laundry detergent all, that's not all. It's not going to do it at all. 
It's not. There is only, there's only one baptism that will save you. And water symbolizes this baptism that washes away my sins. And what is the baptism that does? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Water baptism symbolizes being baptized and washed in the blood of Jesus. It is the immersing of our souls in His blood that was given as a ransom and as a pledge for our salvation. That is what washes away our sins. That is what brings to salvation. So that is what the third what is. is Baptism symbolizes, number three, being washed in His blood. Being washed in His blood. I can't do it. Pastor Rob can't do it. Pastor Matt can't do it. Our children's director, Miss Hope, can't do it. Only Jesus can wash you white as snow. Who can be baptized? Let's go to the who. Let's go back and look at Matthew 28, 19. Told you we'd come back to this one. It says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So who can be baptized? Disciples or followers of Jesus Christ. You have to make this decision that I am following Jesus. And really the only way you can do that is if your heart has been regenerated by the blood of the Lamb. You have to first be washed clean. You have to identify with Jesus Christ and His death, burial, suffering, and His resurrection. You have to let Him be Lord and Master of your life. You have to say that I cannot do this. I'm going to defend I'm going to depend on you. If we profess and say it and we we say we're going to follow, that means we're going to have to do it. That means you can be baptized. As we've already said, battery died. It's all right. As we've already seen it should really follow after your conversion. It should really follow after you have decided to follow Jesus. That's what the eunuch did. The Ethiopian eunuch, as soon as in his heart he made that decision that I will follow Christ, he was baptized immediately. It may start off as a private decision, but it eventually has to become a public declaration. So why should you be baptized? So we looked at the what, we looked at the who, and I don't mean the band. You're welcome, Daniel. Let's look at the why you should be baptized. Well, really, real simply, number one, it's because Jesus was baptized. Pastor Rob already said it during the announcement time before we come, I come up here. It was important to Jesus. Jesus, we have to remember that Jesus first and foremost was Jewish. Jesus on this earth was born into a Jewish family. And as we saw earlier, baptism kind of springs out from a Jewish cleansing ritual. So Jesus would have done and followed everything that would have been required of him. If you read in Matthew, Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, I came to fulfill them. And he is the perfect Lamb of God. When he went to be baptized... John the Baptist said, you're the one who should baptize me. But in Matthew 3, Jesus says, permitted at this time to fulfill all righteousness. And there's a whole, whole other sermon right there with that because, again, Jesus being the perfect lamb, 
you had to wash the lamb before he could be sacrificed. And that's a whole other sermon for another time. But if you want to read about Jesus' baptism, write these, uh, write these scripture passages down. Matthew 3, Matthew 3, Mark 1, and Luke 3. So Matthew 3, Mark 1, Luke 3. What's our second why? Why should we be baptized? Because Jesus commanded it. It's that simple. Let's go back one more time to Matthew 28, 19. It says, Go, and if I'm doing, this says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. As we said about it earlier, this is the Great Commission, and a commission is an instruction or a command. So Jesus commands and instructs his disciples to make disciples. And a part of that is baptizing them. So if you, again, are a follower of Jesus Christ, you've made that decision, you are publicly declaring that he is your Lord, he is your master, he's the one you're going to obey and you're going to follow and you're going to go after with all your heart, even in the days when you sometimes choose not to, uh, but then you realize, hey, I need to come back to him and that relationship's the most important thing you have. You are a disciple. And if you have not been baptized get baptized number three if you're a new believer it's your next step we are all about next steps here at Celebration Church we are all about help, helping you find your next step on the journey every journey begins and continues with the next step and maybe you're here today and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe you want to know the freedom and the relationship that he offers. The hope and the peace that he offers you. Rob already talked to us about it. It's as simple as saying yes to him. And I'm going to invite, I'm going to invite some of the worship team for response time to come on up. It's as simple as laying down your surrender and letting him take, and be control, take control and be king of your life. It's confessing and repenting of your sins. See, you cannot, you can't have an encounter with Jesus and Him not change you and then say, I'm, I'm a following Him. If you are still living in your sins and there is no remorse, there is no regret, then you really not have had an encounter with Him. So your first step is to lay down your yes. And I'm going to tell you right now, it, repenting is not just being sorry for your sins. Anybody can be sorry. It's something deeper. 2 Corinthians 7, chapter 7, verse 10 says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regrets. It's not enough to be sorry for your sins. Anybody can do that. But godly sorrow leads to repentance. And if you want to know what repentance means, repentance means to change your mind, to change your direction, to turn around. It's basically laying it all down and turning from death and turning towards life. And it's another way to say it is we're talking about conversion. It is saying, I have a new mindset. My, I am not going to pursue the things that I used to. I'm going to convert from a kingdom of death and convert into a kingdom of life. And the repentance that leads to salvation, this converting from death to life, leaves no regrets. Will there be challenging days? Yes. Jesus even promises that. If anybody tells you that the Christian life is easy and it you should have no problems they're lying to you because Jesus himself said in this world you will have trouble it will come as surely as the sun rises and it sets there will be trouble but a life that is lived to the fullest for the glory of God has no regrets so maybe you're waiting maybe God is calling you to take a step Maybe you're supposed to be moving somewhere or you're supposed to be going to another job or you're supposed to be speaking to somebody and you're fearful and you're not taking... Take that step. Because what's the worst that can happen is if you share the love of Jesus, you share the love of Jesus. That doesn't sound too bad. It's your next step. Take it. So today in your heart and your mind as you feel the Holy Spirit drawing and leading you, repent and turn to Jesus. And you don't even have to wait to come up here. You can do it right now at your seat. You're trusting 
in Jesus' finished work on the cross, this work of redemption that bought you back from the destruction and death that our sin deserved and demanded. Repent and be free. Place your faith. Just go ahead and stand with us. Just go ahead and stand up. Repent and be free. Place your faith and trust in Jesus. If you are an unbeliever today, if you don't know anything about Him, this is your first and next step. And maybe you've already put your faith and trust in Jesus. Then baptism is your next step. We've talked a lot today about what it represents, what it looks like. It doesn't save you, only Jesus can. Make this public declaration and display of that private decision. If you're a new believer today, baptism is your next step. And if you haven't been baptized at all, maybe you've been a believer for a while, but you haven't been baptized, let's do it today right now. We've got it set up. Let's do just like the Ethiopian said, look, here's water. We made it easy. We've got water for you. Why shouldn't you be baptized? There's nothing. Again, we full disclosure, the water may be a little cold because the, uh, the heat pump broke, but we're identifying with the suffering of Jesus. I think a little cold water is nothing compared to the public declaration that I'm following Jesus. We have made it as easy for you as possible that we can. We have water. We have towels. We have clothing. We even have the unmentionables that Rob already mentioned. We have done everything we can to take the excuse away. There are no excuses to not follow Jesus, especially if there is a tugging on your heart. You feel him knocking at your door. If he is knocking, answer it. Acts twenty two sixteen. Why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Don't delay today. Baptism is open to all believers, whether you are just now confessing and professing it, or you've been doing it for a while and you haven't been baptized. And if you've already been baptized, we want to rejoice today with those who are making this declaration. Because what you're doing is you're identifying with Jesus and you're identifying with his body. That means you have a family here that's here to celebrate with you. So let's pray. And then they're going to lead us in a little bit of a song. And again, if this is, if today you don't know him, I pray you know him. Lord Jesus, we thank you as, we, as we're praying. Because God, as the song they're going to sing, we're professing and that we need you. We have to have you. We cannot do this on our own merit. We cannot do this in our own power. Everything we do is going to fall far short of what you can do and what you demand. What, what the law and what perfection demands, we are far from it. But God, you, Lord Jesus, have fulfilled it. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for taking our place on the cross, for making a way for us to come to you and to receive life. You were able to do so because you are the way, the truth, and the life. We know that no one can come to the Father unless they come through you, Lord Jesus. So, Lord Jesus, we are placing our trust in you. And if you do not know Jesus today and you want to follow him, that's as simple as you can say it. I can give you the words, but it's really got to come from your heart. And it's really as simple as saying, Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in your finished work. We confess that we are sinners in need of your grace and your mercy. We cannot redeem or save ourselves, God. We are in need of a Savior, and that is you. We lay our lives and our sins down before you. We trust in your finished work, and we surrender our Lordship of our lives over to you for you to become our Lord, to be the Savior of our lives. And God, we take our next step. As we take that next step, let it be with you and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let us not only learn about your word and about you, but let us come to truly know and obey your word and truly know you and let the obedience not be out of, out of duty because I have to, but let it become out of this new love relationship that we have found as they lead us. this song, I invite you to sing this song along with me, and but to sing it to him from your heart.
lifts the voices. Come on, give it all to God this morning. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need Come on, let's stay in that posture of surrender. Lord, I need you. Will you lead us, Sarah, one more time? Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I'm desperate for your grace today, God. I'm desperate for your mercy today. Every hour I need you. I need you, God. My one defense, my righteousness, oh, God. Listen, please be seated just for a moment. If today you say, hey, I want to follow, you guys stay up here. I'm going to have them lead us in just a second. Our associate pastor, Matt Mackey, is right over here at the door, right by the bathrooms. If that's you today and you say, hey, Rob, I I'm feeling the Holy Spirit's leading me to do that. Come on. With every ounce of boldness you have in you, this is your opportunity to step out today. If that's you, you make your way over to Matt. Okay? If you say, hey, Rob, I just need someone to pray for me today. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to come to the front. Lorena, will you right here, right here for me real quickly? Okay. Jake, will you help us right here this morning? If somebody, if you just say, hey, I just need someone to pray for me today. I just need someone to just, I just know, I just need to know someone cares today. I just, I just need someone to pray through my situation. I just need to know that I'm not alone today. If that is you during this time, they're going to lead us one more time, right? We're just going to stay in this moment. We always want to have this available to you, okay, because we believe that baptism is important. And as BJ said, it symbolizes what Christ has done, okay? All right, let me pray for us, and they're going to lead us one more time. Father, we just love you today. And Father, I just pray that if there's hearts that need to surrender to you today, that they would surrender, God, with hearts abandoned. With hearts abandoned, Father. We're desperate for you. We need you, God. We can't make it without you. You're my only defense today. When the enemy comes calling and comes blaming and hating and throwing shade at us, God, you're our only defense. You're our only righteousness. So let us rest in the perfect word. Let us rest in the words today of John 19, 30, that it is finished doesn't matter how messy doesn't matter how complicated doesn't matter how jacked up it may be your grace and your love and your power is greater than any mess that we have made so save today God save today in Jesus name they're going to lead us here one more time just right in your seat if that's you once again and you say hey I want Pastor Matt's going to be waiting for you. He'll show you where the bathrooms are and how to get changed and all of that. We would love to have you be baptized this morning. If you need prayer, right here. These two are ready for you. Thank you, Jesus. I think uh, one of the most important parts of this song is that he is our defense. And it doesn't matter what the world says about you or what Satan tells you or what you say about what you're your own mind says about yourself God is your defense and he's the one that you can go to and say no to those things I am who you say I am and so as you sing this just sing that to him and tell him that you believe that he is your one defense come on Lord I go come on Come on, church. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. 
you or coerce you with emotionalism that's not our goal that's the holy spirit's job to lead you to that but i want you to let you know the next time we're going to be doing this is the ne- the first sunday of next month okay and you say hey rob i just need someone to sit down bj did a great job today but i just need someone to sit down with me a little bit more if that is you today please get with one of us we would love to walk you into a deeper conversation with that if you say hey rob i i i I, I want to believe in Jesus, but I just have some questions. I don't understand how this all benevolent, all good God could allow evil and suffering. Well, that's more than just a Sunday morning that we get, but we would love to sit down with you and walk through that, that the scriptures reconcile. Well, I don't understand, God. I want to believe in this Jesus, but how could he let my loved one have cancer? How could he let my loved one die? Friend, I'll tell you the answer is in the gospel. If that's you... We would love to sit down with you and share the gospel with you. Okay. It's true. Those are hard questions to ask, aren't they? Why do so many people die? Why does this happen? Why does this happen? Why is that? Listen, the answers are found in the perfect epitome of truth, and his name is Jesus. Right? He is truth. Amen. Listen, I had uh, Liz. Liz, are you still here? Liz is still here? Okay, come up here real quick. She wanted to felt like the holy spirit puts in my heart just give her just a few minutes here come on up here you might come up so we can see is that okay i know you're taller than me but let's just um if you don't mind where people can see you she just came to me during service and i just want to give her a few minutes here i know that we're supposed to have a format and all that kind of stuff like that but uh, let me just give her a few minutes here
she said she wasn't a preacher, but I don't know because she went down through several, several lanes. But listen, I want to say this real quickly. I want to deflect it. I appreciate the kind words, but I'm always going to deflect it back to Jesus. Um, you know, my story is very messy as well. And that's why God planted Celebration Church. It's not your church. It's not my church. We did not shed our blood on the cross 2,000 years ago. So we have no right to define whosoever is. Because the gospel, gospel is already done. Right? right? So we love so and we appreciate, love and appreciate you. you. Right? right? Appreciate, appreciate you sharing. sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, Mom, you may want to get her the study Bibles, man. You know, because she's uh, she definitely has some signs of teaching the gospel or sharing the gospel. And listen, sharing the gospel has nothing to do with having a pub table, a nice little bottle of water, or anything like that share you are called to be ministers of the gospel okay let me make that very clear there's nothing special about here okay it's just taking that next step of faith and sharing the gospel so thank you liz for those kind words thank you for for that but i'm just going to give it back to jesus because he's the only one that deserves it amen amen so i'm gonna pray for us and uh, as she said about our offering time when when we planted this church, we wanted to do our offering a little bit differently. And I'm not hating if you're watching online, please, you know, or nothing like that. We're not, we're not hating. We just don't pass plates around here or anything like that. We do believe, we that, believe ministry that ministry takes, takes money, money, right? Right. But what, but we, what wanted we wanted is, is we, wanted we wanted it to be, it to be our full trust, trust in the sovereignty, in the sovereignty of God. God. That if he called us to plant this, that he would supply, he would supply everything that we would need. So we do, so our, we do offering our offering a little differently here. We like to go out celebrating. Right, right. We believe in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave. And so we just give back a little bit and say, hey, God, would you save sinners with this money? Would you advance your kingdom? Would you end abortion with this money? Would you free sex trafficking slaves that are being enslaved? Would you use this money to fund ministries to break the spirit of human sex trafficking? See, that's the difference. Would you, Would you give, give back, back to, him, to him, not because not we're because trying to build, build our kingdom, kingdom here, but because, but because we, we, he has entrusted, he has entrusted us with Celebration Church to advance his kingdom. kingdom. And, we and we want to be found, found faithful, faithful in doing, doing that. that. Amen. Amen. So I want to so remind, remind you real quickly, quickly about, about the Connect, connect card in the back of every seat. If you didn't get one, all you have to do is reach. Or if you're on the front row and you're a guest today, just reach right behind you. Get one in the back seat. There are two brown boxes here at the back wall. One straight here. And one to my right, right, your left. left. Would you drop those connect cards connect in there? Would you drop the offering, the offering in there? This is mainly for those that call Celebration, Celebration Church their faith family or regular home. home. And I'm going to pray, gonna over, pray that over that, that God, God would keep, keep saving sinners, sinners and setting the captives, the captives free. free. Amen? Amen. And listen, and listen I, feel I feel to say, to say this, this, for some of us Christians that think abortion is a political issue, it's not. It's a Jesus issue. Okay? Okay. So if you got offended, then you'll just have to get over it. Because we believe in the sanctity of life because Jesus values life. And the Bible says that we were created in the image of God. Right? Right? Let me let me time out. Let me give let me give the other side of that. If you've had an abortion today, as Liz has already said, there's more grace than your abortion. There's more love and a mercy than your messiness and your sin. Does that make sense? Make sense. But here's what I pray. Listen to me, church folks. Right? Can I say that church folks? Like in the in the sound sound. Church folks. Listen to me. I pray, I pray that the that spirit, the spirit of, adoption of adoption would raise, would raise up inside, inside of you. you. Even to Even those that to said those adoption's, that said adoption's not, not for me, my, my wife, wife and I have walked, walked through that journey, journey for 10 years, for 10 years. and it's been the it's best thing that could ever happen because, because God, God even showed, showed me in that how he adopted, how he adopted us. us. So I pray so that the pray American that the church, church would raise up and walk in that spirit of adoption. I heard this statistic from Chad McMahon, and... He said that he there's 5,500, 5, if I remember correctly, people, people uh, uh, pe uh, kids, uh, kids in the foster, in the foster system. system. And I want to believe that he said there's 5,500 5, churches in the state of Mississippi, Mississippi if I remember, I remember that, correctly. that correctly. I could be wrong. Could be wrong so. So. For you fact you checkers, checkers, you can, you can text, me, text later. me later. But he said but he that just, said that just every, every church, church would just foster one child. The whole system would be done away with in the state of Mississippi. we got to stop burying our heads in the sand. And we got to start being the church. Just being, you don't get a lot of amens on that. I know. I know. Well, I like all the other stuff Liz says. You're, you're messing, messing it, all it all up. I'm just telling, I'm you, just the telling you the truth because I love you. I love you. 
Let's be Let's the be church. The church. Amen. Amen. Let's walk, Let's in, walk the in the uncomfortable. uncomfortable. One, of our One of our three words, words here is serve, serve sacrificially. sacrificially. Let's, Let's serve, serve until it hurts, hurts for the glory, for the glory of, God. of God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you for Jesus. Father, as we sow into your kingdom, would you remind us, God, that you can take it and do whatever you want to do with it. God, would you remind us that we don't own Jack, that you own everything, that it's all yours. It's all yours, God, and so we just sow it into your kingdom, and we love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we say amen with me. Amen. Amen. If you are a guest today here real quickly at our Welcome Center, one of our Dream Teamers has a nice little gift for you. We just want to give that to you on your way out just to say thank you for being in worship. God bless you guys and have a great Sunday.